2 Chronicles 30. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. So he's got the invitation out, not just to Judah, but stretching out. We want to get right with God. For the king had taken counsel, and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. <coughs> now the Passover is going to be kept over the first month. We've got a problem here. The first month we read in chapter 29, they're cleaning the house. They're cleaning all the rubbish out. They're sanctifying the priests. They don't even have enough priests to do the sacrifice. The first is come and gone. And we have this in the Bible, Numbers chapter 9, verse 4. God has pro put a provision in the scriptures for this very day. And I guess God knows what's going to happen already. In Numbers 9, chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 4. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. That's where we are in Chronicle. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai. That's the proper time. First month, 14th day. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by a dead body of a man. When they could not keep the Passover on that day. They came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. They're unclean. The nation of Israel, the nation of Judah is unclean in Chronicles. So those men said unto him, We are defiled by a dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in the appointed season among the children of Israel? Do we skip it? What do we do? We're unclean. We're defiled. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord command, command concerning you. i got to ask God. I'm not sure. It's a very good question you got there. And it's going to show up many years later. Almost 700 years later. Not an unclean man, but unclean people. And the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Speak of the children of Israel, saying, If any man any man of you or of your posterity, your families, where we are in St. Christ, shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, not clean by a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. You're going to keep it no matter what. The 14th day of the second month, at even shall keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So God has put a, a provision in the law that if you are unclean, all right, you can do it on the second month. It's in the law. So here we go. We're in the second month. For they could not keep at that. Uh, they could not keep it at that time. Too busy cleaning. Too busy getting things right, chapter 29. Because the priests had not sanctified, set themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together at Jerusalem. Well, that's one of the things. I mean, if you're a far off journey, Numbers chapter 9, if you saw it, it's like God already knew what was going to happen. He's sending letters out. We're going to have the Passover. But we're a month. We're a month late, but we're going to have it. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree. That's the first time that word shows up. To make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba, that's down south, even the Dan, that's up north. That's even including Israel, that's been foul and wicked in the eyes of God. All of Israel, not just Judah, all Israel, that they should come, like the law said, to keep the Passover to the Lord God of Israel at 
Jerusalem, what the law said. For they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it is written. Been a long while. So the post, the mailman, went out with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah. Those Israel north, Judah south. And according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again. That's repentance. That's what repentance means. Come back. Get back. Do right. Unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Not Ishmael, Isaac. And he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. So there have been people taken captive by Assyria and they, they escaped. We've been attacked by Assyria. We've been attacked by Israel. We've been attacked by the Edomite. We've been attacked by the Philistines. God is angry at us. We want God to have favor with us again. Be not like your fathers and like your brethren which transpass against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore have given them up to desolation, as you see. Look at the mess we're in. Look at the troubles we're in. Look at the battles we've had. Now be ye not stiff-necked, as your fathers were, but yield yourself unto the Lord, and enter into a sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever. And serve the Lord your God, not all the other gods. That he, that the fierceness of his wrath, anger, fierceness of his wrath, may turn away from you. He's angry because you're not doing right. Does God get angry? Yes. When does God get angry at? When you don't do right. For if ye turn again, repent, unto the Lord your brethren, and all your children shall find compassion before them that led the captive. Your enemies are going to say, you know what? Maybe just let you go. You've had it hard enough. And it'll be God twisting the hearts of your enemy so that they shall come again into this land, Israel, for the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his fierce wrath, wrath from you if you return unto him. The only way to please God is to get right with God. You can't carry about and keep doing it your own way. So the post, the mailman, passed from city to city throughout the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even unto Zeppelin, that's the sea coast. Now here's a reaction. But they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. And anybody involved in any public ministry has had that happen. You've been mocked and you've been laughed at. Uh, who do you think you are? Oh, go back to God. Leave us alone, you preacher. Go serve your God. We'll serve our God. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All they that live godly in Jehovah will suffer persecution. They are laughing at King Hezekiah. That's how wicked they are up north. You want to get right with God? You want to do right? <laughs> go down to Jerusalem. I got the golden calves over here. We got our holidays. Leave us alone. Go back to your old land, preacher. And one of the minor prophets speaks about, you know, don't preach in Bethel anymore. Go home and preach. Nevertheless, divers, different kinds, separates of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. So not everybody rejected. There are some that say, you know what? Yeah, let's get right. Also in Judah, the hand of God was to give them one heart, unity, to do the commandment of the king, come back and do the, the Passover, and the, the princes by the word of the Lord. So what the king and the princes wanted to, by the Passover was also the word of God, the law. We're supposed to have the Passover. You're supposed to come. And there assembled at Jerusalem much people, not all the people, notice that, much, not all, to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month in a very great congregation, not a, a total congregation, but a great one. So they're going to keep the Passover on the second month, 
and they're going to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the second month. God allowed that. For the circumstances that the heart of Hezekiah is, we want to do right, we missed it, Lord. It wasn't our fault. It was our Father's fault. And there arose and took away the altars, plural, that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for the incense, took they away and cast them into the brook Kindron again. That book of Kindron is just a, a, a sewer system for all the gods and all the altars for God. So there's still altars there. There's still the worship of fallen gods. And Hezekiah is like, in order to do right with God, in order to get God's plea, we got to get rid of that mess. Get rid of it. They're clean in the country. That's how you get a revival. America is not going to clean her country. There will be no revival in America. Absolutely not. And they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month. They couldn't do it in the first month. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed. <laughs> we're doing it wrong. We're doing it right with the right heart, but we're doing it wrong. And sanctified themselves and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. And they stood in their place where their position after their manner, the way David prescribed it, and the way the law of Moses prescribed it. According to the law of Moses, the man of God, the priests sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites, the blood of the lambs. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore the Levites had charge of killing the Passovers, that's the only time that word shows up, Passover, plural. Remember Exodus 12, it said, you know, your land, that land. And there was supposed to be a land for every family if you were size enough. And that if your family was too small, you were to go to your neighbors with the land. There was more than just one land killed that afternoon or night. There was more than just one land killed on the Passover. For everyone that was not clean to sanctify them, Unto the Lord. So again, like chapter 29, they're not all sanctified yet. They're all not ready to serve the Lord and everybody of the Levites. The Levites are not priests. God is allowing them to do until the priests can do fully. And God is allowing this because the heart of Hezekiah is we want to do right. We want to do it now. And Numbers chapter 9 said we can do it in the second month. For a multitude of people, even many from Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar, Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves. Remember, those men were unclean. And Hezekiah and the priests and Levites are getting them clean before the Passover comes and on the Passover because we want to please God. Yet they did eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. That would be Numbers 9. Numbers nine. Those men were unclean. They could keep it in the second month. God did not hold it over to another month. So they got to do everything by the Passover day and on the Passover. Those are already the second month. But watch this. But Hezekiah prayed for them. Those are unclean. Saying, the good Lord, pardon. You got to be guilty to get a pardon. Everyone. Everyone who's still unclean said, God, guess what? We are not unclean. We are guilty. There's a pardon. So the good Lord pardoned everyone that prepared his heart to seek God. The Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. It's a mess. He has got a messed up group of people, thanks to his fathers, his grandfathers, and their fathers, and how all the wickedness has been in the land of Judah and in Israel. He's, he's got people who want to do right, but they're unclean according to the law. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. 
Well, how does he heal him if he hasn't done something to him? Or the expression goes, he healed their uncleanness. Hezekiah said, Lord God, pardon them. We're guilty. The Lord's like, okay, I do. Merciful God. And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that's right after the Passover, seven days with great gladness and joy. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. This is a joyous, great, wonderful, grand old time in the Lord. They're celebrating their Passover. The Passover was the birth of the nation of Israel. When they came out of Egypt, they became a group of people under God being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. They're still messed up. They're still captivities. They're still probably war-torn areas. But God has pardoned us. God is looking upon us. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. You got to confess. And the king is talking to the Levite and comforting them and strengthen them. Keep on going. Keep on doing. Come on, boys. Let's, let's serve the Lord. Let's do right. Come on. The whole, congreg the whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days, and they kept other seven days with gladness. So Passover, one day, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, one week, seven days, and they say, you know what? This is so great. God's so wonderful. We're going to do seven more days. Two weeks. We're just praising, thanking God in the Word and what He's done for us. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, did give to the congregation a thousand bullocks. That's a lot. Seven thousand sheep. And the princes gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks and ten thousand sheep. And a great number of priests sanctified themselves. Man, they're just offering sacrifices upon sacrifices upon sacrifices. And all the congregation of Judah, with the priests, and the Levites, remember Levites, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. And all the congregation that came out of Israel, north, and the strangers, Gentiles, that came out of the land of Israel, and that, that dwelt in Judah rejoiced. So you have people in Israel, you have people in Judah, and you got Gentiles. Serving the Lord with the Passover, serving the Lord with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and serving the Lord the extra seven days. So there was great joy, great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there was not, not the like in Jerusalem. It hasn't been such a good time, such, such a good time of the Passover since Solomon. Everybody's rejoicing, everybody's repenting. Everybody's trying to please God. And God is pleased. Then the priests, the Levites arose, blessed the people. And their voice was heard. Had to have been loud. I get accused of being loud when I preach on the streets. They had to be loud. And their prayer came up to his holy dwelling. Look at that. Ready? Came to the holy dwelling place. You mean the most holy place? No. The holy place? No. Even unto heaven. God is sitting on the throne. The heavens, the heavens are there. The cherubim are there. The, the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ before he's born, he's there. All the angels, all the cherubims, and they're sitting there and they start hearing Israel and Judah and Gentiles is praising God. And they heard the prayers of the Levites reaching out to God and they're probably repenting because, Lord, we're not doing the right time. Lord, we're sinning. We are sinners. We have rejected you. Our nation has been against you. Lord, and heaven hears it. God heard it in heaven.
glory to God that we have a God that listens and hears us. 